Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new video. This week, and not on a magic roundabout, on the bench, we have part four of the beginner's guide to die cast restorations. And as you know, this is, uh, is a beginner's guide for people who haven't got all the gear, all the equipment like drill presses, lathes and all that sort of malarkey. This is for people who are just starting out in a hobby not sure if they want to continue with it and i'm just going to try and demonstrate what you can do without having all the fancy gear but having said that there is one or two things that you're going to need and as you can see in front of you there's one or two things household stuff actually um whoops the pledge or you can use um the place to revive it. This is the old stuff. It used to be Johnson's Clear. Mr. Muscles oven cleaner. Dowel polish remover. Okay, a drill that most people have got in their sheds. And some metal polish or plastic polish if you can get it. Or lamp doctor. Anything like that will do what cleans plastic. Cotton buds. Uh, the only things that, you, uh, that I've got here which you'll probably need extra. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, is this is my this is my uh, flame thrower butane torch? Now it's a bit overkill, I know, but you can buy the uh, ones that they use for cooking. You know the small ones you can get about that big for cooking. Similar sort of thing, but not as fierce. Uh, you can get a bit of tubing like this. Okay, this is a bit of aluminium tubing, and I'll thin down the 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 wall. Okay, and I put a bit of cork on the end, which is uh, to help hold it, it gets hot. Now, you can use copper tubing, anything what gets hot. And you can then use that to, I'll show you in a minute anyway. Um, center punch, as usual. And some drill bits. Now, I'll just show you what I bought today, which I consider will be handy for beginners without laying out a lot of money. Now, I haven't tried this yet. I only got it a few hours ago. And I got this, and it cost me six quid from the range. All right, it's a battery-operated mini hand drill, and it comes with two batteries and a load of burrs. Okay, now, I haven't tried this yet, but we're going to demo it in a bit. Okay, so six quid. So you don't have to fork out expensive money for, for Dremels and all the equipment. You can buy accessories for this. In a separate pack if you want uh like i say it's all about trying it out for beginners people have been doing it for a long time uh we've probably got all this equipment and more so like i said before this is for beginners who are just starting out in a hobby who want to try it out before they settle down and because you know it's like you don't want to buy loads of stuff and then find out no oh, i don't like this and you waste a load of money so this is what we're going to do this is what it's all about Right, and I've took apart, took the bases off a couple of couple of cars here. I don't want to take, I don't like taking all the bases off cars that I'm not going to restore straight because I don't like bits laying around. I'm, I, I don't like that. Uh, you get lost and they get damaged. So, first one is this one, which took the base plate off. Um, that's got a. Let me just pause a second and I'll um, get the camera in closer. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so I've got a couple here. This green one. This one I sent the punch stick. It's quite a big one. This is a nipple head on here. It's quite big. So I've drilled a I've sent the punch stick. Okay, with that one. This one was a like a a weird shaped one, this one, because you get some which are very, very big uh mushrooms. So you're going to need to, to alter things for this one. And this one, again, was a, a nipple one. But if you can have a look at this, you notice before we even started, there's a crack right away across there. It's not reached the window, back or front yet, but it's still there. Okay. Now, this often happens on castings, and I put it down to the fact that when they put these in the press and press them down, 
that the press has not been at the correct torque and it's cracked the screen. Uh, if you do this long enough, you'll see quite a few like this. So this will take a little bit more care. Getting this out, you don't want to make the crack any bigger, especially when it's right close to the front there, as you can see where my finger is. Okay. You can put a double super glue in there, but the risk is of clouding the window. So what we're going to do with this one, we're going to use the heat tube method on this one. And on this one, we're going to use the burr, because that's quite a big one. And you start getting a big drill in there, and, you know, you could end up, it gets hot, and uh, it, it just takes for a long time. So we're going to use the burr on that one, and we're going to use a drill on that one. Okay? Right. Now, before we carry on with this, a quick word about interiors. I'm not doing a, a guide on taking interiors out, because they, they vary so much from the plain vac form with no opening doors no no nothing to complicated ones like james bond batmobiles any jerry anderson's you know things like that uh, one thing i will say is when you start taking things apart when you've got the base plate up just don't tip upside down and you know let it all fall out because you'll end up forgetting where bits go you need to know where the bits go you need to sort of take it apart carefully taking a note or taking photographs of how it comes apart and it goes back virtually the same way some interiors you'll have to have the doors open in order to get the interior out and then you have to be careful with dashboards make sure you know where the dashboard goes and any springs for bonnets and boots and make sure you know where they go especially like on the mark 10 jaguar corgi uh places like that okay so just be careful on those just don't rush into it Take it apart carefully and see how you get on. Right, let's get on with this then. Right, okie dokie then. Which shall we do first? Let's try the drill. Now, oops, excuse me, sorry, I just knacked my bloody camera. Um, so, we'll try the drill method first. What you need to do is see that. Just get your bottom of your drill and make sure you, you, you're you going to cover it as you go over, yeah? But again, you can see that it's got a slight crack in it. You can just, I don't think you can see that, but you can just, if I'm getting close enough, the camera focus. Come on, boy, come on. You go further away, you can just see a slight crack start on either side of that mushroom. All right, let's get the drill on. Let's get our drill on, dog. Okay. So basically what you're after doing is nice and steady. I'm just moving it around a little bit here because it obviously wasn't quite central when I did it. Go slow. Because you don't want it to slip off and smash into glass. Okay. It doesn't work always every time. Just clear your rubbish and have a look, see where you're going. Okay. You can see what's happening, can't you? See, it's not focusing very well at the minute. Either that or I'm not focusing very well. Could be one or the other. You can roll it, roll your drill around a bit if you want, just to try and get it. Okay, right now. I felt that go. So now, that's loose now, look. There you go. So that's loose without any damage. Okay, okay. So that's that method. I don't know why this is not focusing very well at the minute. So that's that. Like I say, get a good size drill bit and make sure that it's sharp. Yeah, and go steady, go slow, that you don't end up slight. If you go in there fast, you slide off and you'll smash into the glass and you'll regret that. Trust me, I've done it. Uh, this method, 
we're going to try this. I've just got it out of the box, put the burr in, and we're going to try this now. And what we're going to do is to go round the outside of that with the burr, okay, and get it off. Now, these are handy for when you've got uh, lorry cabs where they're quite deep into the um, into the cab, especially the Bedfords, Corgi Bedfords. They're quite deep in there, and some of the uh, ERFs. So we're going to try this. I've not tried it before, so we'll see. Oh, I so see you've got to keep your finger on this. Okay, sounds like a bloody bumblebee, doesn't it? It might not have the strength for this. And what you're basically doing is just going round, you're going round it. And basically grinding it down, that's what you're doing. You're grinding it down. Flattening it out. This will take longer than drilling, obviously. But all I'm doing is demonstrating different methods that you can do. If you feel that you've got a big enough drill bit and you want to go for it, then do so. The thing with plastic is when plastic gets hot, it starts to get all like chewy and not very nice to work with. So that's why we're keeping on the rivet. I'll just check every now and again. It's it's loose. Well, that's how, you, that's how you do these. I mean, it was going to take me too long to do all this. So I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to get right down to the near, near, it comes off, and then I'll come back. All right, okay. So we got down as far as that, as you can see. Now, I had to change the batteries in this because the, obviously the batteries in the shop what were in the kit. They didn't last very long. I mean, God knows how long they've been in the box, in, in the packaging. So I'll put new batteries in. Right, so you get down to there and then pop it out. There you go. Okay. And then you can clean that up. You can go around, you can clean that up with your, with your, uh, with your mini tool, pencil drill or whatever they call it. You can do that. So that's that one done. So I sent it. I didn't show you all because it took ages just to drill it out and you've got a board with it and I don't blame you because I would have done as well. So that's that one. Now this one, this <laughs> this one, right, it, be careful. All I'm going to say to you is this. All right, we'll get it out. Uh, the, the, obviously the safety aspects about this, right, it's butane gas. And it's a live flame. And I tell you, just be careful where you're pointing it and what you're doing with it. Wear gloves and all the, your safety equipment. Okay? Because otherwise, you're going to hurt yourself. Now, it takes time to warm the tube up. So, I'm not going to put you through that misery of sitting waiting for the tube to warm up. Well, I might do. But we've got to light it first. You can hear a bit of noise now. going now. See that. What I do is warm in the tube up.
takes a bit of time. That burning off there is a bit, obviously a bit of previous plastic when I did the last one. Dog's leg dick, he don't like the noise. Okay. But it does take a bit of time to warm this up. Oh, hello. I think I got a bit too close then. And then you basically put it in there. And it should melt through. So you've got to get it hot. I recommend you use copper pipe rather than this aluminium. There you go, it's gone. There you go, cut that noise off, it's gone. There you got a hole, decent hole. You can get different size tubes obviously now what i've done with that the reason i recommend copper is because i've used this quite a few times and now the aluminium is starting to to break up because it's it gets really hot so that's that method and it's quite a quick method and i didn't damage it i didn't crack it any further which was good and and it's sealed there and cracks that side so what you got to do then is just clean up the the outer and do that with your sander or your bit of stick and it's come off there you go the wrong way around, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll just pop back straight in there when you're finished, when you're ready to go back together again. Yeah, you just need to clean it up with a with a sander or something. Afterwards. Just clean the top where any of plastic is laying around. Like that. Like it's smooth. Get in there with your file if you want and clean that up. But that's what I do. But what I do recommend, though, is using copper rather than aluminium tubing, to be honest with you. It lasts a lot longer. Otherwise, you'll get that effect where, it's, where I've got it too close. That was my own fault. I was holding it too close. So, yeah, copper tube. It does work. Just be careful with it, that's all. And I find that, for me, it's quick and easy clean quick and easy right so that's how you get the screens out oh there is one another method you can use which uh is you get a drill bit get a small drill bit i don't know something about this size something like that and you can drill around you can get your drill and drill around the round the mushroom and then connect up the dots and pop it out that way that's another method and no doubt there'd be a few people out there who come up with a different idea. If you have, pop them in the comments. But these are the three or four methods that I use. So, like I say, you don't have to use them. It's just a demonstration. Okay. Right. I'll clear this up and then we'll get on to cleaning the screen. Right. Window cleaning time. Okay. If you've got a completely painted window, I haven't got one here at the minute, because I've, I've probably got one over there somewhere, but it's in a car and I don't want to take it out yet. Um, if it's completely painted, somebody's painted over it, you can use this, Mr. Muscles oven cleaner. Now I use Mr. Muscles because I found this one uh, is better than some of the cheaper brands, a bit stronger. And what you need to do with this is put your glass unit into a of a chinese takeaway tub or an ice cream tub um something with a lid do it outside spray this on it goes like like foam make sure you get a good dousing put the lid on it and leave it overnight and that will soften the paint you might have to you can pick it off with your finger then or and then wash it under the tap with warm soapy water and it will get majority of it off 
uh, I would say, in my experience, he's got most of it off. Um, so that's that. If you've got odd bits and pieces <coughs> like this on here, okay, depending on how thick the paint is, if it's quite thick paint, you might have to, after you've washed it, that's the first thing you've got to do is wash your screen in warm, soapy water. Okay, not boiling water, warm, soapy water with a toothbrush, a hard toothbrush and not a scouring pad. Yeah, and then get it all as clean as you can and see what's left, see what you're left working with. Now, occasionally you're going to get spots of paint like this. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. Bit of blue on there. And depending, you can feel with your finger how thick it is. Sometimes you might be better off just sanding that out. Okay, because it will sand out. If it's enamel paint, you might get away with sanding it out. Or you can use a cotton bud and some nail polish remover. But you don't really want to use this in vast amounts because it will it, it won't damage your plastic that much but it's not great and you can rub it round and keep rubbing it it depends on what sort of paint it is it could you know if it's emulsion or it could be you know, probably got the soap and water if it's an enamel you know you'll have to see what works best okay You can get it off with this. It's coming off with that, you see. Okay. Or you can use this artist white spirit. I found this one. It's not as powerful as the raw white spirit you get in the big bottles. Uh, that'll work as well without doing too much damage to your plastic. Okay. Just keep rubbing at it and it'll come off. I'm going to put a bit of effort into it. But all these things that I'm using, the things that I've tried... Okay. There you are, you see it's gone now. That's gone now. So, that's those. The, the other way of getting, if you don't want to use oven cleaner, there's two other methods you can use. You can use uh, Dettol, but don't get the Dettol, which has got additives in it. You want the plain, old-fashioned Dettol. Yeah, that's better. Or you can use brake fluid. That's not a problem. Brake fluid, leave it in overnight or a couple of days, whatever, depending on how much paint it is. I know a lot of people use brake fluid. Quite a few people use Dettol and a few people use oven cleaner. That is your choice. You can try all three methods and think which one suits you best. There's no rule says you must use this and you must use that. So you decide. Your choice. If you've got all three, have a go at all three. See what you think is best. So that's that. So we've, we've got the main, sorted out the main paint. We've sorted out the odd bits and pieces you can use getting off with this. Uh, now, I haven't washed these in soapy water. I should have done, but I didn't. So cleaning them up. Now, this has got a few, this has got a big crack in it. So this is why it's useless. Um, you'll get some, when you clean them up, are scuffed and pitted. Now, the best way to get scuffed and pitted out is using these multi-sided sanders you can get. This one's about worn out. You can get these from any of these shops that sell women's makeup and stuff like this. Okay, and I advise you buy three or four of these if you can, because they don't honestly, that they're not designed for this sort of work, but they do, they do do the job. Uh, or you can buy something a bit more at market. Something like this, a starter pack. These are sponges. They do the same sort of thing. But these were designed for plastic modelers. So, what we need to do. As you can see, you've got your... Let's get around away. You've got your number one. You've got your number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. And number six says so polished. The last one is polished. Polishing gives the nails a high gloss finish. This is the last one. This is the buffer, basically. Okay. All right. So what we need to do, if you've got something, what can we do? This is a little bit. Um, let's do it on this one. Nine times out of ten, the marks are on the outside and not on the inside. 
because it is difficult to get on the inside. So try and keep all your attention to the outside. So basically start off, don't be scared of it, all right? Start off, all right? It's, it, it, it all depends on how bad your screen is. If you think, oh, I'm happy with that, it will do. You don't have to start off or do it at all. You just put it in your pledge or your thing, and I've done with it. But if you find that you've only got light scratches, light scuffs, then you don't need to start off with number one. You can start off with number two or number three or four. Okay. Practice will teach you that. But if you've got quite deep marks in it, then I suggest you start off with this one. But for this purpose, we're going to start off with a big one. Okay. Just give it a good old going over. Be careful how you hold it. That's the thing. Support it. All right. Because you don't want to snap it in half. Okay. So we're going to do this. Okay, then wipe it off with your finger before you go to the next grade. And number two, I'm not going to say it's going to turn out perfect because it's a very old battered screen. This has got a bloody great crack in it. But it's just giving you the idea of what to do. Okay. This is the sanding method. I'll go through another couple of methods in a minute. Okay, give it a wipe off. That's number two. Then we hit it with number three, with where it is, around there. Patch those from the side window rather than the front window, I suppose. You see, it's it's moving out out already. So that's the there's some crap behind it. It's cracks not helping. So that's number three. Then we move on to number four. Moving on to number four. And you'll see, it depending on your pitting, you'll start to see that it's uh, coming clean. As you can see, that's coming cleaner now. That's number four. Then we go on to number five. You can get straight ones of these, not all, they're not all this shape. And you get different qualities depending where you go, like you go to Boots's or you go to the pan shop or something, you get different quality ones. You know the score. You don't need me to tell you that. Just keep rubbing it away there. Yeah. Oh, it's coming cleaner now. Look, you can see it. And finally, number six, the buffer. And the polisher. This has got that crack in it. It's not helping, is it? That crack's making it awkward for me. Should have picked another one, really. But this is what you have to do anyway.
Right, so that should, I've got all your scuffs out. And make it look a bit shiny. Like I say, you, these are getting on a bit now. I need a new, a new one really, but yeah, that's the idea. Okay, of these. And you'll, you will find it'll be fine. And then you put it in your, in your pledge, pledge revive it, multi surface wax. This is an old one, lasts for ages. This is the original clear that used to have years ago. Then they changed it to this, and now it's um, pledge revive it. Everybody's trying to buy it, it's bloody expensive. Uh, I usually keep it in a tub like this. Get my tweezers. And then drop it in. But when you bring it out, try not to get any bubbles in there. Okay. And then you get it on some kitchen towel. Dab it off. You've already seen people do it on videos. Dab it off on the kitchen towel, then cover it over. Okay. And you can see that's coming clear now already. Okay. So that's that method. Now, you can use wet and dry. People use the same method of wet and dry. That's quite popular. Get yourself a different grades of wet and dry. Start off and work your way up. I mean, that's 800 grit. You can 600 grit, whichever. Wet and dry. Work yourself up to... That's 1,500, 2,000, or as high as you want to go. So that's the other method, using wet and dry. You'll see a few people use that method, um, which is a, which is a good method. If you've, got, if you've got wet and dry, Andy, you can buy it from Alfred's in big sheets, and I'll just cut them up into small, usable sheets like that, okay, with a wet and dry. So you can wet and dry that, and that will give you the same results if uh, as the other one. Uh, but it just depends how you want to do it. Okay, some people use micro mesh, like this sort of stuff. This is 3,000 grit. I, if I'm using wet and dry, I'll go over with this at the end. Okay, so that's not a real a real problem. Now, other people, what you can do Is use this metal polish, lamp doctor, or this metal metal polish. Some people will say, "No, you can't put this in the clear after you've used this stuff." But you can. I do it all the time. So when I've cleaned it up with the, with the buffers and stuff like this, you can go over with this. Okay, you can do it by hand. I mean, this, I don't know what this is, this is not really been done, but you can go over with this, okay, with a cotton bud, rub it all in, all right. I mean, you see what they do with the lamp doctor on, on the car headlights, where they're all yellowed, where it's a similar sort of thing, okay. You can go over with this. That's if, if your window screen is not badly pitted, it's just a little dull and lifeless you can go over with this go over this get it all rubbed in now some people some restorers will use the dremel or the electrically operated hand tool with a um with a buffer on it with this auto sol on it yeah, that's okay, but you've got to be very, 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 very careful with that. You don't need to linger. You've got to do it quickly because if you linger, you've got a risk of burning the glass. It will burn. It will melt, and then you'll have a problem because it will just damage it. So you put some on, then go over, rub it off, polish it up. Okay. Buffer it out, up. Buffer it up. Using this cotton ball, cotton wool method, cotton cotton bud method, 
you've got no risk of burning your plastic. But if you've got to practice and you want to use your Dremel or your electric hand drill with the with one of these on, let me show you what they are. Um, uh, give me a something like this, a felt brush. You can do that. You get flat ones like this. You can do that, but just be warned and be careful that if you're lingering too long, you will end up burning your glass. You'll know when you've done it, trust me. Okay. So if you have a look at these two from one to the other, you can see the difference between that one and that one. Okay. So that's another method you can use. That's if your screen's not too bad. It's just a bit mucky and a bit... Even when it's being washed, you think, oh, you know, I can do something with that. So there you go. Use that. And then you can drip it in your... Drip it. Drop it in your uh, clear poly floor polish. And uh, it'll look nice when it's done. So there are the other me there are them methods that you can use to polish up your screens. Okay. So I think that's just about it, I think, really. Um, obviously, putting your screen back in, you can only use, I would suggest you use some sort of silicone glue. Um, don't use super glue. You can use a little bit. If I mean, I do, depending how you do it, um, you can put a little drop in just to hold it in place. Um, because super glue does cloud clear plastic if it's an enclosed if it's an enclosed, if you whack it on then put your base and that on, or the interior, it will cloud it because it needs to to breathe. All right. Okay, so let's just quickly run through where we are. So you've got removing the windscreen. You've got the three or four methods there. At the beginning, uh, you're cleaning your, cleaning your screens, uh, warm soapy water to start. I always do that to start off. Get them, get them in the warm soapy water, get them for clean off. Um, if it's covered in paint, you can either use Dettol, brake fluid, oven cleaner. Uh, nail polish, if you've got a few spots on you, you just want to get rid of, or Artist White Spirits, not as powerful as the other one, risk damaging your screen. Uh, and when you've done all that, you've got it all nice, you can uh, use the sanding method with the sanding uh, sticks. You can use your wet and dry, or... You can use your O-Soul. All depends on how bad your screen is. I can't tell you how bad your screen is. You're the only person who can tell you that by looking at it. If it's got real deep gouges and scratches, scratches, I suggest you sand it with some rough sandpaper first uh, and then work your way out to a finer grip. Um, and then if it's just lightly, lightly scuffed, then you can get perhaps get away with your O-Soul. Okay. Well, I hope this helped somebody, and at least, and I wasn't talking to myself all for the last hour, however long it was. Okay. I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Look forward to the comments. And I'll see you later.